China has become an extortionist state and Canada and Australia are ripping into China's hostage diplomacy. China's primitive methods of abducting foreign nationals in order to achieve foreign policy goals is facing mounting criticism as both Australia and Canada have strongly condemned arbitrary detentions of their citizens in China. Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau has directly hit out at China for arresting random Canadians and pursuing diplomatic goals, while Australia has warned its citizens living in and travelling to China of arbitrary detention by Chinese authorities as relations between the two nations sour. Canada's outburst against China is based on the detention of two Canadian nationals, Michael Kovrig, a former diplomat, and Michael Spaver, a businessman. They were arrested by Chinese authorities in December 2018. This was China's retaliatory measure against the arrest of Huawei CFO Meng Wangzhou by Canadian authorities on an extradition request from the United States. Meng Wangzhou is the daughter of Huawei founder Ren Zhengfei. She was arrested in Canada over US allegations of violating trade sanctions on Iran. So Beijing decided to pick up random Canadian nationals in China on espionage accusations. Until June this year, no charges were framed against the two Michaels, and worse still, Beijing had even withheld consular access to the two Canadian citizens, citing coronavirus lockdown in prisons. Beijing's message is loud and clear. Release Meng Wangzhou or let the two Michaels die. China is the only country that engages in kidnappings if relations with a country goes downhill. And Beijing is doing this quite openly and unabashedly. Chen Weihua the European Union bureau chief of the state-owned China Daily newspaper even tweeted, People often fail to note that Meng is worth 10 Kovrigs and Spowers, if not more. Meng Wangzhou's extradition is moving ahead as a strong case has been made out against her. But Beijing is constantly accusing Canada of becoming an American lackey. Xi Jinping controls Chinese courts with a high conviction rate of 99%. He doesn't understand the concept of independent judiciary. And therefore, Xi Jinping wants to hold Canadian nationals to ransom, thinking it might help him bend the Canadian judiciary. Meanwhile, Prime Minister Justin Trudeau is naturally irked by Chinese actions. Coming down heavily on the communist country, he said, if the Chinese government concludes that detaining citizens is an effective way to gain leverage over Canadians and the Canadian government to randomly arrest Canadians, then no Canadian will be safe. The Canadian Prime Minister further said any regime would start arresting random Canadians in order to pursue diplomatic goals. He also added that to demonstrate to China that they can just arrest Canadians and they can get what they want out of Canada, even for us going against the independence of our judicial system, would be absolutely unacceptable. Trudeau is not wrong in feeling enraged by China's hostage diplomacy and even Australia has joined him in holding China accountable over the arbitrary detention of foreign nationals in China. Canberra itself has come to terms with China's primitive and barbaric ways in a harsh manner. As trade tensions escalated between China, that is when Beijing slapped steep tariffs against Australia and Australian citizens deciding to boycott Chinese products, Beijing turned rogue. An Australian national was sentenced to death last month after being convicted by a Chinese court on smuggling charges. The Australian government was left shocked and stated, Australia opposes the death penalty in all circumstances for all people. We support the universal abolition of the death penalty and are committed to pursuing this goal through all the avenues available to us. The convicted Australian's friends and family claim that he is innocent and the conviction was made without any due process. The allegations against China are quite believable given the country's unusually high conviction rate and secret jails. Also, the Australian citizen was arrested seven years ago, but China has sought to extinguish his life only when trade tensions escalated with Canberra. Australia has reacted by upgrading travel warnings on China. 
warning its citizens this Tuesday. Australia's Department of Foreign Affairs and Trade said Australians may also be at risk of arbitrary detention. It is horrifying how China takes revenge on a country's citizens if the government of that country chooses not to give in to Beijing's unfair demands. The US too has stood strongly with Canada over this issue. The US Secretary of State Mike Pompeo said the United States stands with Canada in calling on Beijing for the immediate release of the two men and rejects the use of these unjustified detentions to coerce Canada. Additionally, we echo Canada's call for immediate consular access to its two citizens in accordance with the Vienna Convention on Consular Relations as China has prohibited such access for almost six months and the world has no knowledge of the two Canadians' condition. There is a strong warning for the world community underlying such arbitrary detentions. If you visit China, you are not safe. You can be charged with threatening China's national security and you wouldn't even know why. The next thing you know, you are incarcerated in a secret Chinese jail followed by an inequitable trial before a kangaroo court, all because your nation is not in good terms with China. China isn't just a rogue country, but it is also an extortionist state.